Hi guys, today is March 23rd, okay? And today we're gonna to do Taylor series day two. And what we're gonna do is an actual, the Taylor series generated by F, the function at X equals A. So this is no longer gonna be centered at X equals zero like, like the last lesson was. We're, um, we're gonna center this at different places, okay? So let F be a function with derivatives of all orders throughout this, without, throughout, excuse me, some open interval containing a, then the Taylor series generated by f at x equals a is this, okay? Now, it looks just like what we we're doing, but instead of being zero, it's at a, this a value, okay? And so x minus a, that's just a translation to the right a, and we needed the derivative at that a value and second derivative over two factorial, so it's just like before, okay? The next one would be, and I'm not writing here, but it'd be f triple prime at a over three factorial times x minus a cubed. So nth derivative, nth power, nth factorial, okay? And it's gonna be at a, and this is gonna slide it over to, um, to the right or to the left, you know, depending on what the a value is, um, to the right or the left, it's gonna shift. Okay, and so that's all there is to this. Not much different than the last one, okay? Um, this is the, the Taylor polynomial with order n, okay? And we start at k equals zero to n. We ended it n, okay? And a lot of times you're gonna see all of this, you know, this is gonna be, n is the, it ends the value we stop it at, okay? All right? Okay, so a lot of times you're not gonna see k here, you're gonna see n, okay? And that's okay, they're interchangeable. All right, so I'm gonna slide this up and look at the first example, okay. All right, so here we go. Suppose f has derivatives of all orders at x equals one. So we have the derivative at x equals one for, for you know first derivative, second derivative, third derivative on, okay. Suppose that the following values apply, f of one equals three, f prime of one equals four, f double prime of one is equal to negative eight, eight triple prime of one is negative seven, and the fourth derivative of f at one is seven. Write the fourth degree Taylor polynomial approximation for f centered at x equals one. So it's just a matter of putting everything in, okay? So this is polynomial, and we want fourth degree, which is also fourth order, okay? So we want we want x we want x minus a to be the to the fourth power, okay? So that's where we're going to end it at. So p sub four of x is equal to, okay, and we want to do this at at centered at x equals one. So it's going to be f of one over zero factorial. Now we're not going to write that because zero factorial is just one, okay? Plus f prime of one over one factorial, but we're not gonna write that because it's one, times x minus one, okay? And then the next one is gonna be, that would be a first order, okay? Or first degree, okay? And then next one would be f double prime at one over two factorial times x minus one, squared plus f triple prime at one over three factorial times x minus one cubed. And then the fourth degree, right? Fourth degree is fourth power, okay? So plus the fourth derivative at one over four factorial times x minus one to the fourth power, okay? So now we're just gonna clean this up a little bit, okay? So the fourth degree Taylor polynomial, fourth degree, fourth order, same thing, okay? F of one, F of one from above here, we know it's three plus F prime of one from right here, it's four times X minus one plus F triple prime at one is negative eight over two factorial. Okay, so that's gonna be um, negative eight. I'm just gonna put that in parentheses because it's negative eight right, right now. Okay, we'll fix that in just a little bit. Over um, two factorial, which is be two, times X minus one 
squared plus f triple prime at one, that's negative seven, so plus a negative seven over three factorial, that'd be three times two times one, which would be six times x minus one cubed, and then plus the fourth derivative at one is seven, so seven over four factorial, four times three, which is 12, times two is 24, okay? times x minus one to the fourth power. Okay, we're gonna clean some of these up. So the final answer to this would be this. Fourth degree, fourth order, Taylor polynomial will be three plus four times x minus one. Now that we're adding and, we're, and this is a negative divided by a positive, so that's gonna be a negative. So I'm gonna write this as minus and eight divided by two is four times x minus one squared. And right here, we're gonna have another subtraction, right? Because it's negative divided by a positive. So it's gonna be negative seven six times x minus one cubed, and then seven twenty-fourths. So plus seven twenty-fourths times x minus one to the fourth power, okay? And this Taylor polynomial it approximates, it approximates this function that meets all of these conditions, okay? So we can use this to approximate values that are really, really close to where the center is. So like that's why I'm asking you to approximate f of 1.1 here, okay? So all we have to do to find f of 1.1 is wherever we see x, Okay, and we need, okay, this is what's really important because they'll take off for this, okay, is this is not equal to it. It's going to be an approximation. So we really need to make sure we put this approximation symbol, okay? So f of 1.1 is, is approximately 3 plus 4 times 1.1 minus 1 minus 4 times 1.1 minus 1 squared minus 7 six times 1.1 minus one cubed plus seven twenty-fourths times 1.1 minus one to the fourth power. Well, 1.1 minus one is just 0 0.1. So this is approximately three plus four times 0 0.1 minus four times 0 0.1 squared minus seven six times 0 0.1 cubed plus seven twenty fourths times 0 0.1 to the fourth power okay and now i'm going to grab my calculator okay i'm going to grab and slide this up a little bit okay um, cause I know that's in the way of when we, we do the closed captioning, you can turn the closed captioning off. Um, if you have that feature, okay, you can turn that off. All right. Um, on YouTube, but, um, so I'm going to go to my graphing calculator right now and I'm going to show you how we're going to do that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And I'm on the home screen. All right. And so I'm just going to start typing in, um, this polynomial. So it's or Taylor polynomial approximation. Okay. So three and then plus four and then parentheses. 0 0.1 and then minus 4 times 0 0.1 squared and then minus and our fraction bar 7 6 and then left parenthesis and then 0 0.1 cubed and then come out of the exponent in my calculator and then plus another fraction bar 7 fourths and then parenthesis and then 0 0.1 and then raise it to the fourth and press enter okay and we get 3.358 Eight eight six two five, so three point three five nine 
Okay, so we'll, we'll round to three decimal places for our approximation and we'll go back to our paper now. Okay, so what this means from our graphing calculator that f of 1.1 is approximately 3.359. Okay, so we're using, we're using the Taylor polynomial, okay, the fourth degree Taylor polynomial to approximate the function at 1.1, okay? All right, and that's the first example, guys. All right, so for example two, what we wanna be able to do is find the Taylor series generated by f of x is equal to e to the 2x at x equals 2. Now, that chart I gave you on the last lesson, okay, we can't use that because that was being, that we could use that if it was centered at x equals 0 to determine e to the 2x, but this one's centered at x equals 2, okay? So we're not, we're going to have to be able, we're going to have to go through all the derivatives, okay? And it's actually a good practice here to show, okay, what would the nth derivative, is there a formula that we could get for the nth derivative? And there is, okay, and we'll, we'll talk about that. It's about looking at patterns, okay? All right, so the first function, we're gonna go through the, at least the first four derivatives, okay? And then kind of try to see if we can come up with a pattern for the nth derivative, okay? So here we go. So we have f of x is equal to e to the two x, okay? So then the first derivative would be equal to e to the 2x, right? Times the, you know, it's chain rule, times the derivative of 2x, which would be two. So it'd be e to the 2x times two. Okay, so that'd be, I'm gonna write the two first. So that'd be two e to the 2x, okay? Okay, and now for the second derivative, so f double prime of x, Okay, it would come out to be, okay, e to the 2x, right? e2 times e to the 2x times 2 again, right? So 2e to the 2x times 2, or 2 times 2e to the 2x. Now, we would normally multiply these, right? And we would get 4e to the 2x. I'm purposely, a lot of times when you, when you clean it up, you lose what's really happening. So you kind of want to, you want to look at it, what happens before you like multiply these. Okay. Cause there's definitely a pattern going on here. Okay. All right. So the third derivative, some of you may already see it. The third derivative. Okay. And I'm going to, I'm going to find it based on this one right here. So it's going to be two times two. times e to the 2x, right? So there's my 2 times 2, e to the 2x times 2, or that would be 2 times 2 times 2, e to the 2x. So that'd be 2 times 2 times 2, that's 2 cubed, right? 2 cubed, 2 squared, 2 to the first, hopefully you're seeing it, okay? So this becomes 8 e to the 2x. Okay, how about the fourth derivative? The fourth derivative of f at x. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use this one to figure it out. So it'd be 2 times 2 times 2, because that's my constant. 2 times 2 times 2 times e to the 2x, right, e to the 2x, times another 2. And lo and behold, okay, this is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 e to the 2x, well, that'd be 2 to the fourth. Fourth derivative, fourth power, right? So this would be 16 e to the 2x. And I notice I'm going on an angle here. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, so I'll try to straighten it up. Okay, so I'm going to do a dot, dot, dot. We can figure out from this pattern, from this pattern that's going on, okay, what's happening for the nth derivative, okay? So the nth derivative of f at x would equal, okay, and just from this pattern, it would be two raised to what power? And it would be the nth power, okay? And then e to the two x. 
Okay, so those are the nth derivatives. We have basically all the derivatives. I mean, if I want the 17th derivative, it'd be two to the 17th e to the two x. If I wanted the 20th derivative, that'd be two to the 20th um, e to the two x, okay? All right, now we wanna find this, we, we, wanna, we wanna do this at x equals two, which means I need to find all of these values at x equals two, all right? So f of two, would equal e to the fourth because it'd be e raised to the two times two. So e to the fourth, okay? F prime at two would be, and be this one right here that my finger's at right here, okay? It would be two e to the fourth, okay? And then the second derivative at two, would be equal to four e to the fourth. And the third derivative at two would be eight e to the fourth. So they all have something in common, right? The fourth derivative at two would be 16 e to the fourth power, right? And so let's go dot, dot, dot. Okay, so what is the nth derivative at two? Because we're gonna need this, okay? So what would that be? Okay, so that would be two to the nth power e to the fourth power, okay? Because this 16 is two to the fourth, the eight came from two cubed, four came from two squared, two came from two to the first. And even this one, remember I said in the last lesson, this is like the zeroth derivative, right? So this would be two to the zero power, which is one, and there's a one right here, okay? All right, that pattern still holds, okay? So we wanna generate this Taylor series, okay? So the Taylor polynomial, okay, P of X, the Taylor polynomial would be, okay, um, F, it'd be, let's write it out, okay? So it'd be F of two for this specific one, okay? So F of two, because we're sending this, this would be a Taylor polynomial that's centered at two regardless of the function. And then we're gonna put these values in for the specific function, okay? So then this would be F of two plus F prime of two times X minus two. And let me slide this up so you guys can see it, okay? Maybe I'll zoom out a little bit. Okay, so we can see everything. All right, so then this is gonna be plus F double prime of two over two factorial times X minus two squared plus F triple prime at two over three factorial times X minus two cubed, all right? And then let's do plus dot, 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 plus, okay. All right, so we need the nth derivative at two over n factorial times x minus two to the nth power, okay? and then plus dot, dot, dot. Okay, so that's the general form of it, right? Okay, what's the specific one for this particular polynomial, okay? So this would be P of X would equal F of two, and we found earlier that F of two was E to the fourth. So E to the fourth, and then plus F prime of two. Well, F prime of two is two E to the fourth, so plus, 2 e to the fourth times x minus 2 plus f double prime of 2. f double prime of 2 is 4 e to the fourth, so that'd be 4 e to the fourth over 2 factorial, and 2 factorial is just 2 times x minus 2 squared plus f triple prime at 2 is 8 e to the fourth over 
three factorial, which is three times two times one, and that would be six times x minus two cubed plus dot, dot, dot. Okay, so the nth derivative at two is this right here. It's two to the nth e to the fourth. So plus two to the n e to the fourth over n factorial times x minus two to the nth plus dot, 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 okay? Now we can continue on and clean this up a little bit. Okay, so P of X, the Taylor polynomial would be E to the fourth plus two E to the fourth times X minus two. I wouldn't distribute this. I would just leave it like this because then you can see, oh, it got moved to the right two, okay? That's centered at two then, okay, all right? And then this four E to the fourth divided by two, that'd be two E to the fourth, so plus, 2e to the fourth times x minus 2 squared plus, and then this 8, 6, right? 8, 6, they're both even, right? So it becomes 4 thirds. So 4e to the fourth over 3 times x minus 2 cubed plus dot, 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 plus, and then um, 2 to the n e to the fourth over n factorial times x minus two to the n plus dot, dot, dot. Taylor polynomial, okay? Now, what is this? How is this written in sigma notation, okay? So you can write, this is equivalent to sigma, and I just realized you guys can't see it, so I'm sliding it up, sorry about that. And again, if, the, if this ever gets in the way of that closed caption on the YouTube, okay, just you can turn the closed caption off, okay? All right, so that's, it's just at the bottom. Um, if you don't do the full screen, it's right at the bottom right. It says CC and you can just click on that and it turns the closed captioning off if, if the closed caption is distracting you or it's in your way or anything, okay? So this would be N equals zero, okay, to infinity. And let's just make sure if we put zero in here, okay, what happens, okay? So two to the zero, that'd be one, okay? So that'd just be e to the fourth. And then zero factorial, that's one, right? So this would be one and this would be one. And so it would just be e to the fourth right here. And then we'd have x minus two raised to the zero power. Well, that's just gonna be one, okay? It's, so we'd, it, it's working, right, for n equals zero. So starting at n equals zero, it works, okay? So then this would be two to the n, e to the fourth over n factorial, and then times x minus two to the nth power, okay? And that would be the Taylor series written in sigma notation. So this is the Taylor series for this function, um, f of x equals e to the 2x. It's the, this, this series approximates um, the function. Now, if you go to infinity, okay, if you go all the way to inf infinity and write them all out, then the function and the series is actually gonna be the same, okay? Because it deals with e to a power, okay? Um, so what I wanna do next is go to our graphing calculator and I wanna show you, okay, what if we do the nth orders? Like, let's look at the first one. How, how, if we just do um, this one, e to the fourth, how does that compare to e to the 2x at x equals 2? And then and build this out and do more and more and more of these to show you that it starts wrapping the function. And I'm going to do that with the graphing calculator, okay? And we're going we're gonna to put it in at sigma notation, okay? And, and I can't go to infinity but I can go to one and then to two and then to three and then to four and then to five and we, we can work it out that way, okay? So I'm gonna go back to my graphing calculator right now. Okay guys, on our graphing calculator, all right, what we wanna do is let's go to, we're gonna set our window up first, okay? So go to window and let's set um, x min to be negative one and then let's set the x max to be four because remember we're going to send center this at x equals two okay x scales one is fine okay y min let's make that negative 
20 and it's just I've gone through this already and and figured out what the best settings are okay um, and then this one we the Y max we want to make 100 and then the Y scale we want it to be 10 okay if you need more time just go ahead and pause the video and you can you can set your graphing calculator up okay and then the next thing we want to do is go to y equals and then let's type in our actual function y equals e to the 2x or fx equals e to the 2x so second and e and then 2x and then we can graph it that's what this looks like that's what e to the 2x looks like okay and then what we're going to start doing is we're going to start um, building this polynomial okay so it's gonna be a really bad approximation at first with just one term okay so the first one we're gonna do okay the first term of our of our um, Taylor polynomial is e to the fourth okay so we want to go type in e to the fourth and then we're gonna graph that okay not a very good approximation okay it's very it's diverging on either side of two right so what's going to happen is we put more and more terms. It's going to start to wrap right around in here where my arrow is right here, where my cursor is. It's going to wrap right around there, okay? So then the next term, if you're looking at your paper, okay, to e to the fourth, what we want to add to that is 2e to the fourth times the quantity x minus 2. So 2, whoops, go back. I need to press plus. So we need to add. 2 um, e to the fourth and come down to that out of the exponent times the quantity x minus 2 okay this is going to be a better approximation than the last one okay so it's going to look like this a little bit better okay that's just the tangent line at 2 actually it's just so you know that's the equation of the tangent line right there okay at x equals 2 all right so let's bend this a little bit more let's all right um, go back to y equals basically we're doing a tangent mm, I don't know if you I don't know if anybody calls it this like a tangent curve like it's starting to match up okay so instead of just touching at one point it's touching on an interval of points okay all right so then the next one is going to be plus 2e to the fourth and then come down out of the exponent and then times the quantity x minus two and squared and let's take a look at that so this is going to be a this is a parabola okay because we have an x term and an x squared term so this is going to be a parabola and see how it's starting to wrap a little bit more okay and over here it's looking really good right but over here you can still see a little bit of the blue okay and over here it's pretty bad but as you go add more and more terms, this part right here is going to wrap or wrap along this. Okay, you're going to see. Okay, we'd have to go out a lot of terms. We're not going to go out that many terms to really wrap it. Okay, so I'm going to go out. I think I'm going to go out about four terms. Okay, so fourth degree or fourth order Taylor polynomial. Um, I, I had said something about doing sigma notation, and I realized you know what you can't do that because you have in that sigma notation you have two unknowns. You, your n is changing, and then your x is changing. Okay, and so if we typed it in, tried to graph it with sigma notation, it would be trying to put x's in, and we need n's and x's. So you can't really, it's two unknowns, and this will only give us one unknown, okay, if you're trying to graph, okay. Um, all right, so then the next one was um, uh, 4 thirds e to the fourth. So I'm going to uh, make a fraction bar, and I didn't mean to do that. Let me delete that. Okay, let me get over here. Okay, now plus. Okay, so plus, and now my fraction bar. And it's 4 e to the fourth over, and it would be 3 times, and it would be parenthesis, the quantity x minus 2, close the parenthesis, and raise it to the third power. Okay. All right, and we'll graph this. Okay, let's go ahead and graph it. I think I have everything right. And see, it's starting to wrap even more, right? So we can actually do, let's do a couple more terms. Come down. 
Okay, because we, we actually have an, we have the formula for nth derivative, right? So we can add, we can just type it in. Okay, this was, um, it's going to be 2 to the 4th power. Okay, so alpha x for the fraction bar. It's going to be, so we're going to do 4th uh, degree. So it's going to be 2 to the 4th, 2 raised to the 4th. And then e to the fourth. I'm just not simplifying this, okay? Because we don't, I don't have that one on my, we don't have that one on our paper. And then this would be um, four factorial. So four, and then alpha window number nine, okay? And then quantity x minus two raised to the fourth, okay? So this is this is um, the fourth derivative of e to the two x at two. Okay, and if we graph this, see it's a, it looks like a kind of like a parabola again. It's parabola-ish. Okay, and we go y equals. Okay, and we could do let's do one more. So let's do a fifth degree Taylor polynomial to approximate this. Okay, and so the next, the, for the fifth degree, we'd add, and it'd be a fra another fraction bar, and it'd be two raised to the fifth power, e to the fourth, over five factorial, alpha window four factorial, and then number nine, and then times the quantity x minus, Two raised to the fifth and graph. And see how okay at first it was like right here, but right now it's it's starting to diverge right about here. This is looking really really good. Okay. So I'm gonna press trace and I'm gonna look at see what the difference is between the actual. Actually, we could just see what it is at two. Okay, so 54, okay, so the actual function, the value of the function, so like f of two would be 54.59815. You know, I just realized if we do it at two, they're gonna match up perfectly, you're gonna see. And type in two. Yeah, see, they match up perfectly, okay. But if you go away from two, okay, 42 point, so we're at, let's let's do 1.8. Okay, at 1 1.8, 36.597941. And if we go 1.8. Little bit different, right? A little bit different, okay? For it to be the same, though, we could get it to be the same if we went out infinity. Now, obviously, look how long it took us to do a fifth degree. Type it in the graphing calculator. It took us a while, right? So you're understanding that these. I really want. This is what I really want you to understand is that these Taylor series approximate the function. It's like approximating the function with the tangent line. Okay, that only works for a few values, like really, 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 really close. But these, we're, we're creating polynomials that match the function instead of just the tangent line, okay? All right, and that's basically what this is all about, okay, is trying to mimic these functions, okay? All right. Okay, for our next example, okay, um, we wanna find a third order Taylor polynomial for f of x equals two x cubed minus three x squared plus four x minus five at x equals zero. Okay, so let's figure out the function. Okay, so the function f of x, is equal to 2x cubed minus 3x squared plus 4x and then minus 5. Okay, so because we're trying to do a third order, we're going to need to get the third derivative, okay? So f prime 
of x would be 6x squared minus 6x plus 4. And then f double prime of x, okay, that would equal, that'd be 12x minus 6. And then f triple prime of x would simply be 12. Okay, so now the next step is, all right, if we want to do a third degree Taylor polynomial for this, okay, at x equals zero, we've got to find all these values at zero. So we've got to find f of zero. Okay, so f of zero, okay, so x is zero, so that'd be zero, that'd be zero, that'd be zero. So we'd be left with just negative five, okay? f prime of zero, well, this would be zero, this would be zero, so we'd be left with four. And then f double prime of x, or of zero, let me get my white out. f double prime at zero is equal to, well, this would be zero, so we'd be left with just negative six, okay? And then f triple prime at zero would be just 12, okay? So here we go. The third degree Taylor polynomial of x, okay, third degree, all right, would be um, it's going to be f of, the general form would be f of 0 plus f of 0 times x, x minus 0, but it's just x minus 0 is just x, okay, plus f prime of 0. Um, excuse me, I made a mistake. This should be f prime of 0 at, um, times x, okay? And over one factorial, this one would be over zero factorial, okay? But zero factorial is one, so that's why we're not writing it. And this would be one factorial, and that's one, so we're not writing it, okay? So then this should actually should be f double prime of zero, okay? Over two factorial times x squared, okay? So there's my second order Taylor polynomial, or second degree Taylor polynomial, okay? And then plus, and then f triple prime, at zero over three factorial x cubed, okay? So what does this come out to be? So the third degree Taylor polynomial, well, f of zero, it's negative five. f prime of zero, well, it's four, so that'd be plus four x, plus f double prime of zero is negative six, so that'd be, I'm gonna put parentheses negative six over two factorial, and two factorial would be two times one, so that would just be two x squared. Okay, and f triple prime of zero is 12, so plus 12 over three factorial. Well, three factorial would be three times two times one, so that'd be six x cubed. Okay, cleaning this up a little bit some more. The third order Taylor polynomial would be negative five plus four x, and this would be negative three, so minus three x squared, and then plus two x cubed, right? Okay, so then that means the third degree Taylor poly polynomial, I'm gonna write this in the normal way we write polynomials, highest power to lowest power. So we'd have two x cubed minus three x squared plus four x, and I just realized you guys can't see it. Shoot. Gosh darn it. Okay, so plus 4x and minus 5. Okay? Now, look at the original polynomial we were working with, the function. Yeah, it's the same thing, right? It's exactly the same. Okay? Why is that? Okay, and it's because we're centering at x equals zero, right? So these would have, we're not shifting this, this function at all, right? We're not shifting it left or right, okay? So it's not gonna change anything, and it is actually the same function. So a polynomial, we're just creating a polynomial that mimics that polynomial because we're creating the polynomial and it's already a polynomial. Kind of crazy logic there, okay? All right, so the next one, this isn't gonna happen, okay? So I'm just gonna tell you, all right? So 
Um, let's look at the next example. It's, very, it's the same one, but we're going to center it somewhere different, okay? So let's turn the page. Okay, so now for this example, twice this is labeled 3B, okay? Find the third order Taylor polynomial. It's the same function as the last one, okay? But it's at a different center. We're going we're gonna to find it at X equals 1, okay? So we need to go through. Let's go through our derivatives again because that wasn't too hard, okay? So F of X is equal to 2X cubed minus 3x squared plus 4x and then minus 5 and then f prime of x would be 6x squared minus 6x plus 4 and then f double prime of x would be 12x minus six, and then the third derivative. That's as far as we need to go for this one because it's a third order. We're not trying to find the Taylor series. We're just trying to try the third order, okay? So F triple prime of X would be just 12, okay? All right, so now we're not finding these at zero this time. We're gonna find it at, at one. So we need to find F of one, okay? So that would be two, times one cubed minus three times one squared plus four times one and then minus five. Okay. I'm just gonna do the math for you. That would come out to be negative two. And then F prime of one, F prime of one would be six times one squared minus six times one plus four. This one we could probably do in our head. So this would be six minus six, so that'd be zero, and plus four, so that would give us just four. All right, and then F double prime at one, F double prime would be 12 times one minus six, so that'd be 12 minus six, we can do this one in our head too. And that would be six. And then F triple prime at one, well, the third derivative is, is always 12. Doesn't matter what the X is, right? So it's just gonna be 12, all right? So the third order Taylor polynomial would equal, okay, so it's be F of one plus, and that's, that would be over zero factorial, which is one, okay? Plus F prime of one, over one factorial, we're not gonna write it because one factorial is one, it's times, okay, now, we're, we're not, it's not x this time, right? Because we're centering it at x equals one. So this is gonna be times x minus one, okay? And then plus f double prime of one over two factorial times x minus one squared. And then, okay, so that's, this, that's a second order Taylor polynomial. We wanna do a third one, right? So we need to do one more term. So plus F triple prime at one over three factorial times X minus one cubed, okay? So then the third order Taylor polynomial, F of one, well, that would be negative two. And then F prime of one is four, so plus four times X minus one, and then plus F double prime of one, F double prime of one is six, so six over two factorial, well two factorial will be two times one, so that'd be two, times X minus one squared, plus, and F um, triple prime of one is 12, over three factorial, so that'd be three times two times one, so that'd be six times x minus one cubed, okay? All right, so then our third order Taylor polynomial cleaned up would be negative two plus four times x minus one plus three times x minus one squared plus two times, and I should be saying quantity x minus one. So two times the quantity x minus one cubed, 
okay? And that right there is a third degree or third degree or third order Taylor polynomial for f of x at x equals one, okay? And there it is, that's the answer to this problem. All right, so that's, that's um, Taylor series, okay? This, so that's it. Um, we're gonna look at some um, health. So the next lesson, um, if I remember right, is about, and you know, I'm gonna pull up the, you know, I'll pull up the um, assignment sheet and we'll take a look at that and we'll talk about what's gonna happen next, okay? So just hold on a second and I'll get my assignment sheet. Okay, I'm back with the assignment sheet and this was 323. Let me grab a different red pen. And again, this doesn't match up to when it's assigned or because I'm probably gonna assign this tomorrow, okay, the 24th, okay? But um, I want you to do page 496, 13 through 25 odd, that's assignment 11-3, okay? And then what we're gonna do is this Lagrange error bound, okay? And it's called Taylor's theorem, okay? And you know how we had the um, alternating series remainder theorem? Well, we have, we have a theorem okay, that tells us how far we off are off for these, um, um, these Taylor polynomials. So if we go like a third degree Taylor polynomial, how far are we off, okay? And then after that, we're gonna start getting into, okay, so you know that radius of convergence or where, where on what interval do these Taylor polynomials converge to? And that's why we were doing all of these convergence tests, okay? And then down here is where we're gonna start getting into the endpoints, okay? And so that's where we're going with all this, okay? And um, a lot of this, okay, is still gonna be on the AP test, all right? Yeah, um, whether you take the modified one or the full-blown one, um, I'm gonna prepare you right now for the full-blown one until I know anything different, okay? But um, yeah, so uh, I want you to do this assignment, okay? So you guys have a great day and I will see you soon, okay? Take care, bye.